Hola, ¿qué tal? Yo soy Juan Del. You know, in our consumerist culture, it's not that often that a piece of technology changes how you think about music, art, life, the universe. Oh, get on with it! Yeah, cállate, no jodas. But Kirkus, the man behind Destiny Plus, in my opinion, has done exactly that. I'll save my elucidation until the end, but suffice to say that Entanglement Space is unlike any other effects processor I, or likely you, have ever heard. So what makes it different? Ven amigo, te digo por qué. To start, it has four parallel processor cores. <laughs> meaning you can have four different simultaneous effects in any configuration you like, whereas most modular effect offerings only process a single source. You can run them all in parallel from different sources, run them into each other serially from a single source, feed them back into one another, and any permutation or combination of those you like. This lays a really strong foundation for creative experimentation, which I love. But what really makes it stand out are the 64 algorithms. Here they're called programs. Almost every program exhibits an enormous, enormous. <laughs> range of sonic characteristics, which go light years beyond standard effect algorithms. Every program contains some combination of only reverb, reverb delay, 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 chorus, ring mod, flanger, phaser, filter, or pitch shifting. Hola, editing Juan. I forgot distortion. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> distortion. It doesn't sound like that much at face value. Let me show you what I mean. I have some glitchy drums coming from the ADAC 112. And now with entanglement space. without the dry signal. It just takes the, your concept of a flanger and explodes it. It's pure insanity <laughs> in a lovely way. Doesn't sound quite like any reverse delay I've ever heard. I don't know about you. It's a nice distortion and chorus. range from this program comes from the rate and depth of the chorus. So if I turn that up, it turns into a ring modulation. Call me a curmudgeon, but I'm pretty bored with ambient as a genre where the most important factor is the reverb that you drown everything in. So here, I'm approaching ambient from a different angle. 
using entanglement space as a sound design tool to add interesting and delicate texture to the sources before sending them into a stereo reverb from the tip-top Z-verb. So the first voice is some granular piano going into program A7.E. Here's without the modulation. And without the reverb at the end of the chain. It sounds okay, but it's not really adding a lot to the granular piano. So by modulating the delay between the two reverbs, you get these shifting artifacts. If I switch this parameter to be controlled by the CV source rather than the potentiometer, we get those shifts in the reverb. So the second voice is guitar going into program C2.1, which is a pitch shifting reverb. back in the reverb. So on the front panel, we have the four processor cores. They're each mono. There are six parameters on potentiometers. They can be switched from manual control to CV control. And there's a button that's used on some of the programs, not on all of them. Uh, and then you have a program select. There are 16 programs per core for a total of 64 programs. There are four VCAs with output attenuation. You have a stereo pan mixer, 12 modulators, or time complicating modulators. Okay, using entanglement space with the DAW and sending separate tracks to different cores and processing each one differently. I have this session pulled up. If you can name the track, you get 10 extra points. So this is just a little cover that I recorded a few years ago. It's just guitar, <laughs> pitch shifted guitar for bass, actually, and then program drums. Uh, so here's the guitar part. And it actually already has reverb on it. That's the way I recorded it. And then the bass. It almost sounds like AI bass or something. It's uh, <laughs> it's in the uncanny valley of of bass, <laughs> and then the drums. I have a lot of room on there. Maybe turn that down.
let's see what we can do with the drums first. I, I bet I can find some interesting texture for this. Okay, phase shift or delay. I think that might work. that in context with everything else. Maybe a bit much. I'm thinking rather than using it on the whole drum kit, I'll just use it on the snare, for example. That's something I like doing with Zokrowski cells. much better. So I want to modulate the frequency of that filter. That's a nice, interesting texture. I might take down the reverb time just a hair. And I have an idea of what I want to use for the bass. Ring Mod Flanger. That sounds interesting. That's on Core C. Let's hear that. Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it's working with the bass. It just sounds muddy, and I think it it's not going to sound good. I mean, the bass already doesn't sound great. Um, so I'm just going to leave the bass alone. Let's see what we can do with the guitar. So here's our dry. Here's with. See, no, no, I chop popo. All right. All right, with these drums, I want to try to create a pseudo stereo reverb. So, if you haven't noticed, each of these processor cores run in mono. So, if you want to create true stereo, then you have to run two in parallel. However, because they're different programs, it's not exactly going to be a true stereo signal, but I'm here for it. So let's see what we can do. Otra vez, Ed and Juan. Basically what I did here was run the same drum track into core A and core B. I thought I would spare you the time of me figuring all that out. So here's what it sounds like. So now you get something much closer to a stereo image.
I think entanglement space's strength lies in sending monophonic sources to the different cores and using them as part of the sound design. I see entanglement space as an instrument, not just something you throw on at the end of the signal chain to appeal to our desire for spatial context to the sounds that we make. It goes far beyond what I could even conceive of as being a physical space, which is amazing. Tools and technology have been shown to expand our consciousness and give us new methods for understanding and intervening in the world. Entanglement space takes known concepts such as chorus, reverb, delay, and other algorithms and expands them beyond those boundaries into the unknown, which provides platforms for compositional thinking, which were totally unavailable to me before. And that, to me, is worth a lot. But beyond that, it inspires me to reach beyond my boundaries and my creative practice and my life, to be creative and demand novel ideas from myself. I'm certain to a lot of people, the sounds that you've heard in the video may seem a little absurd, ridiculous, or unmusical, which is a descriptor I loathe. As Einstein said, if at first the idea is not absurd, then there will be no hope for it. Entanglement Space has given me hope for creativity and our ever-expanding musical consciousness. Gracias por pasar el rato conmigo, amigos. Hasta luego.